So uh, we are continuing on with our Dafyomi. We learned Daf Mem Amud Aleph. Uh, we were talking about different uh, cases of one day versus two days of 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 of, 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 Yanjo, of, of Shabbat and Yanjo, um and how that works out when you go from one from Shabbat to Yanjo and vice versa. And now we're talking about a case of we we had a story um, about an in, in animal was brought on the first day of, of Yanjiv and then chef on the second day. The question is, you know, well, the status of that animal, uh, case of that was the, the deer case with the, with the house of the exilarch. So, so we, did, we dealt with that. So now we're doing, going on another case of uh, that, uh, that's similar of uh, people bringing in their, bringing things in from outside, um, from outside the Tchum on, on, on Yom Tov. So, 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 so let's get to the get to the story. So Ahu Lifta the Ati Bahuza. So there is a turnip delivery um, to the city of Bahosa. Nafakrava Khazia Kimish uh uh Dhamisha uh Shara Shara Rava Lamizban Mine. So what happens is is that there is a turnip delivery brought to the town of Hosea from a from non Jewish merchants outside of the Shabbat limit on outside of the outside of the Tchum on, on on Yom Tov. And then Rava saw that all these turnips were withered and therefore he um and he allowed and he allowed him to immediately buy them because he knew that since they're so withered there's no way that these could have been brought on he immediately following Yom Tov he allowed people to buy them because there's no way that the non Jew brought them on you know, on Yom Tov itself, because if he had, he would never, they, they wouldn't work, look so, so withered. Right, these are so, these are, there's, these were definitely uprooted um, on the day before. It's not that you were benefiting from Malach Adans for a Jew on, 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 on Yom Tov or on Shabbos would be a problem. So that, that's not the case. Therefore, this is a lack. So my heart and close to the the question is, wait, who's saying that story? It has anything to do with Case of close to because the word to isn't there. I I answered it, I'm explaining it to you, right? But then, like, it's not there in the actual story. Who's it that anything to do with the issue of to And if things have been brought on from outside the to come that's a problem. Rather, this might just simply be based on the fact that, similar to the fact that we have the concept of. That if you so the Rambam didn't act for one for for a Jew, it's a problem for that to benefit, but it's for but for another Jew it would be allowed. So even more so here, where this non-Jewish merchant probably bought it to sell to people who had not no who had no connection to it. So now, so therefore, it should certainly be fine because you know he didn't really he didn't bring it just for you. He brought it because he's one of the market anyways. And if there's Jews who buy, non-Jews who buy, fine either way. He's happy either way. But then what then what happened is that Rava saw that they started to increase the number of turnips that they were bringing in because they clearly that, that means that they weren't actually um it wasn't just by happenstance that they happened to have these turnips available. Rather they were deliberately bringing them in because they knew that the Jews would only buy we're only allowed to buy turnips and other foods are problematic because other foods are brought fresh. So therefore, they he said he, he then said actually you can't buy he told people before you can't buy um, these turnips because they were definitely brought in from outside of the school. On Yom Tov, therefore you, you can't buy them right after right after Yom Tov. You have to wait until the amount of time when they that would normally take them for to have brought them from wherever they were. Okay, so yeah, and so there is a case of tchum and the and, and the problem of of a non-Jew deliberately violating it for the sake of a Jew. We say in the case of, of it being a deliberate, clear violation, that is problematic. Okay, so now we're going to continue on with more cases in a similar vein. So Hanau b'nei Ganana de Gaz de Asa So there are these certain uh, canopy makers who used to braid. Um, uh, does them into their myrtle branches into their canopies. So, what would they do? So, they would cut the 
the Merle's on the second day of of Yom of Yom Tov. The Urta Sharlu Ravina Uruche Bein Lalter, and then in the evening, um, Ravina meeting people to to have them immediately immediately following, immediately following to to buy them immediately following uh, Yom Tov. Amrle Raba Batachlifa Ravina. Then Raba the Raba Batachlifa asked the question to to Ravina. Leisar Lehu Mar Mipnei Sheinam Mipnei Torah. You should not let them do this because they're not knowledgeable in Torah. So we shouldn't let them do this because they might start treating Yom Tov Sheni Shel Goliel lightly. Basically, this is, this is saying when we have two days of Yom Tov, whether that be um, for Rosh Hashanah or for other days um, in Chutzlaret. So he was saying that immediately at, at following the end of the second day of Yom Tov, he was allowing people to buy Hadassim to use for, um, for, for use um, afterwards. Um, you, know, you don't need to use the sun when you make a dull after 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 you have dough, but the people would you know would, people still like smelling nice things, so they would try and they would like to buy them as soon as they're available right after you have dough. So you say you shouldn't do this because the people are going to start um, degrading Shabbat um, the second day of dough because they think that you're being make ill for certain things on the second day of dough as opposed to for the first day of dough. But normally, wouldn't let you would make you wait on time. It would take them to have harvested them. Before you're allowed to buy them, post letting you buy them immediately following the conclusion of Yom Tov. So Makivle Rav Shmaya. So then Rishmaya objected strongly to this. Tama to Enon Meta or Havane Torah, and you knew. Wait, so you're saying the reason is that they're not knowledgeable about Torah, but does that mean that if they were knowledgeable about Torah, they would be allowed? Like, what does that mean? The Havi Enon Bichdeshi Asu, right? But as, as I had explained a little earlier, don't you need. To wait a certain amount of time between the end of Yom Tov or Shabbos and the time when you buy them, in order for them to have had the time to have to perform the malacha more often there, right? Don't you need to wait the amount of time it takes to be then to be prepared? So Azlu Shailu Rava. So then they went and they asked Rava to try and figure out, you know, if you waited a day she asked, shouldn't it be okay then? Like what? It, like what are we talking about? Because every agrees that there's a concept of you should wait to day she asked, the amount of time it would take for them to prepare the prepare the item. But the question is, is like, so what was allowed precisely? So then they went to Rava, and what did Rava say? I'm a little bit in with the issue. He says, no, we, you, you need to wait the amount of time it takes to prepare them. So therefore, you're not, so therefore, the head there isn't quite as expansive as we thought. And therefore, that'll solve, that'll solve our issue. So he's not, so, so, is it, so that's, so that it's treated, so therefore, that Yom Tov is treated exactly the same as every other Yom Tov, and you don't, you don't really have any issues anymore. Okay. So uh, now, now we have another uh, story. Okay, again. So now we're continuing on back to the mission. Medosa Omer Hover Teva, and then he had his interesting, um, he had his interesting formulation of I'll be today or be it tomorrow. Um, that's how Hachlitenu, right? So, so the question is, so should you say that or not? So, so the Gemara is going to analyze that statement. So there's two problems that you, that we said um, that, that, are, that are mentioned that are that are issues with the statement. Um, so I mean, one of them is the is the is the, um, is the you're unsure if this is the right day or not. There's another question of are you allowed to even mention Rosh Chodesh on Rosh Hashanah? Because Rosh Hashanah is, is also Rosh Chodesh, but primary the primary the primary like because. Yeah, New Year is also a new month, but the question is, should you be making making mention of the fact that it used to be that it's also Rosh Chodesh, or should you simply, um, or should you simply not? So now, why would you say one or the other way? So Kibbutz Dachalukim Musaf and Amri. Now, you say because there's two different Kor Musaf that you would end up bringing on Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, could you bring both the Musaf for Rosh Hashanah as well as the Musaf for Rosh Chodesh you normally bring? So therefore, you should mention them both when you're davening. Or maybe you should say that one mentioning uh, when the Torah says, um, you know, you, you know, Yom Trua or Yom Trua, that it's referring to both of them all at once, and therefore um, you should simply say uh, Yom Zikaron, as opposed to saying Yom Zikaron Yom Rosh Chodesh. So what do you say? Do you, do you mention both Rosh Chodesh and Rosh Hashanah, or just Rosh Hashanah? What do I say? So he said, so Ravuna responds, we already learned this in the Mishnah. As Rabbi Dosa Omer, hopefully, 
right? And he says, on Rosh Hashanah, you would say the new moon, whether today or tomorrow. So that implies that you're saying Rosh Chodesh as well as, as, well as Rosh Hashanah. So my love will ask you. So wait, so the, why? So if the if the issue was the with the the issue was with Rios stating that it's all about um, Rosh Chodesh, why don't they argue about that? Like, shouldn't they? Should they? Have, you know, in their, when the Rabbanon argued, shouldn't they have mentioned? You know, they have a problem saying Rosh Chodesh. So la la no no. The real question is. Um, that's being discussed. Mission isn't whether or not you say Rosh Chodesh or not Rosh Chodesh. Rather, the real reason why that why Rabbi statement is brought here is is because he allows you to make the to the conditional is today Rosh, Rosh Hashanah or is tomorrow Rosh Hashanah. And this is what we're saying. No, you can't do that. That's going to make lead people to um, disregard and properly respect uh, the second day of Rosh Hashanah. And that, that so it's reasonable to say that it's referring to the to the Tanai as we just stated, and not based on it. Is there a problem saying Rosh Hashanah or not? Um, as it says in the Brayta, "V'chenayar Rabbi Yosef said, 'Rosh Hashanah shall call Shana Kula Hashana Kula Vlodulo." As as it says in another Brayta, that Rabbi Yosef used to have the practice of saying whether Rosh Hashanah is today or yesterday, or would say, you know, tomorrow or yesterday, and he does for every time when there is Rosh Hashanah, every day of the for every 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 Rosh Hashanah of the whole year, and the Chazal didn't agree with that because they're saying that that's that's a problem. Like you, you can't do that for every time that we have a two, a two, a two day Rosh Chodesh. You know, it, it, it makes them, it makes a mockery of Rosh Chodesh. So, the definition of being an issue of making a mockery of, uh, of Rosh Hashanah is also the issue of making a mockery of, of Rosh Chodesh as well. So, Imar Mishlam Al Hatno, Mishlam Hatli Lo So, if you want to say the issue is that, as I mentioned before, the issue is, is that the don't like when you make these, the conditional saying is today or today or tomorrow or tomorrow. But if you want to say that, but really the Chodesh of Rebidosa is about the fact that you mentioned Rosh Chodesh, so then why would the Chodesh disagree with that? Why would the Chodesh say you can't say, what would be, what would be wrong with saying that Yom Rosh Chodesh is that Yom Zikaron is that, or vice versa, right? Yom Zikaron, Yom Rosh Chodesh, Right, why can't you say them both? So for Elam, so for Elam, I have a hot note. So, so, so maybe, so then, then why do you still say it's about the conditional thing? The conditional um, argument. Why is he arguing in two cases? Why is he arguing in two cases? Why does he really have to say the word Rosh Chodesh? Why can't he simply say Rosh Hashanah? Why does he, why, why in the Lashon doesn't mention Rosh Chodesh? So why does he need, why do we need this particular language or reduce his opinion in the Mishnah? So you might have said that the reason why if it's stated with Rosh Hashanah and and not Rosh Hashanah, you'd have thought that the only reason why some don't like you like the form like the issue is because of the grading of Rosh Hashanah as the problem. But by stating it by the by the new moon, then it teaches you that not only is it about a, is it is it a case of of being mizalzel rosh chodesh, but there's a problem in general making this sort of condition, notwithstanding the degra degradation that you're going to be that that will result to um, rosh hashanah. It's a general issue. You should not make these conditional things. If today is the day of the chama kaveh that it is, it is that day, and that's that. And also, if, this is, if we'd only stated in the case of Rosh Chodesh and not about Rosh Hashanah, then they might say that only that that, that Ridosa only made this condition on Rosh Chodesh, but on Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, that, that's why this boy Ridosa is quoted now and then say, they're saying that on Rosh Hashanah used to say about Rosh Chodesh to teach you both of those of those. Um, Lessons that there's a problem in general of making a conditional is today versus yesterday, whether it be for Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Chodesh, because on Rosh Chodesh there's no issue of degrading of Yom Tov. There's, I mean, you could say there's issue of degrading Rosh Chodesh, but there's no real, um, not I mean, no real difference what, um, for that so much. It's just a question of we don't like you making these these conditions 
don't look good and it seems to make a mockery out of things. Um, and as, as well as stating that you may have thought that it's only an issue for Rosh Hashanah, but, um, or that maybe he'll say to Rosh Hashanah that you would, that Rabbi Dosa would agree with the Chassamim. We are saying the extent that Rabbi Dosa disagrees with the Chassamim. Okay. So now we're gonna ask, now we're now we're um, going to start uh, questioning what we've been everything we've been stating till now. So main thing, right? So uh, the Gemara raises raises a uh, question based on the Tosefta. Rosh Hashanah Shachal Yom Shabbat. So when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, like this year, so Bishami Omri Mipal Mipal Eser. So Bishami says you should have ten brachot. We're referring to most of here because norm so normally and so normally in Rosh Hashanah you have a nine for most of you have a nine. There's a three in the beginning. Um Magin Avot, Khiatamatim, and the Then there is the then there is the three in the middle, which are most of specific for Rosh Hashanah of Malchiot, the Khornot, and Shafarot. So that brings us to six. And then we have the three um um at the, at the end, we have uh, we have the Brach of the Voda, uh, we're saying, then we have a Hoda, which is Monim, and then we have that of, um, of, of Shalom, which is Sim Shalom. Uh, for those of the, so those, I mean, for a grand total of nine. So how does Beit Shammai get to ten? He gets to ten because on, because on Shabbos, normally you would have seven. Right, you'd have three in the beginning, one in the middle for Shabbos, and then you'd have three at the end. So here, so so Bishami says you should have ten because you have three in the beginning, one for Shabbos, then three for Rosh Hashanah, and then three, then then the closing three for total of ten. But Benilla says you should have a a Shmona that has nine. Wait, so shouldn't you say, according to Beit Shammai, that it should be 11? Right, so, right, because if you, because, remember that in, that, in, that um, we're, we're talking until now, we also mentioned in the previous statement that there's, there's an issue of mentioning of Rosh Chodesh. So if you say the Rosh Chodesh is separate, so that means not only should Beit Shammai's opinion have been, 10, there should have been a third opinion listed in the Mishnah and in the Tosefta the of there being 11. That you just because on because Rosh, Rosh Hashanah would, would have there's be three Musafs you bring there's the Musaf of of Shabbos, then Musaf of Rosh Hodesh, and then Musaf of, of Rosh Hashanah, right? So there should be three then, and therefore you should be having um, you should have two in addition to Malchio, Zechariah, and Shofro, you should have another two. So Amar Bezerah, Shani Rosh Chodesh, Mitosha Kol Lashachrit Varvi, Kol Nami Musafin. No, Rosh Chodesh is different because in general, um, Rosh Chodesh doesn't get its own bracha because at when you daven in Shachris and and uh, and Arvit, right? Normally, and morning and at night, it doesn't add, it doesn't get its own prayer. Rather, it's it's um, included in the it's we included in Ritze. So similarly. Um, here we'll include it with the other Musafim. It would not warrant its own bracha because we we generally would not add an extra. We don't add an extra bracha in general to Shmon Esrei just for the sake of Rosh Kodesh. So now the question is now, now we're going to see. So now now we're going to question: Is that real? Do we Beit Shammai even agree to that? Well, me eat lehu Beit Shammai kolel. Does Beit Shammai allow you to include? Um, Yalevyavo with Ritze. Can you have include the Rosh Chodesh can be its own separate bracha or can it be included? Ha Tanya, didn't we learn learn out in the Brayta that Rosh Chodesh Shachal Yot B'Shabbat B'Shamay Omrim Yipalo Shmona B'Hil Omrim Yipalo Shabbat Tasha, right? But didn't we have another Brayta that says that Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbos? That, that so now we're now we're at Musaf. So one should say seven. One would say Beit Shammai says you should you should pray you should pray eight, whereas Beit Hillel says you should pray seven. So that's a, so we've got a problem now because it looks like Beit Shammai does separate during Musaf into two separate brachos. 
So, right. So you're right. That that is a problem for our, for our whole, for for our explanation of of uh, of uh, of whether or not Rosh Hashanah gets his own bracha. You're right. So it seems like sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we're not. It's really uh, so. According to Beit Shammai, it seems unclear. So now we're going on our side. We're explaining what we mean by 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 by, by kolel v'kolel asma tanahi, and the fact whether or not you're allowed to include Rosh Chodesh with Shabbat is itself a subject to a debate um, that's a, the, between the various tanaim. The Tanya we learn in Abrita Shabbat shachali over Rosh Chodesh, over kolel shalmoi arvit shachrit mincha mitpala kadar kosheva over mi'ena mora b'avoda. So now, as far as the uh, question of, of in general, how do you even do kolel? How generally would you would you put a, another day into another davening? So how would that work? So, so now we have another. So this. So we've been to the states that if Shabbos, this is Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, or it's Shabbos Chol Moed. So Arvis and Shacharis, you would. So sorry. So for. So for Arvit, Shacharit, and Mincha, you will you will daven the seven you normally you, you normally daven, and you will simply be and you will simply have a Kodesh in, you um, mean Yalav Yavo would be will be included in Ritze, um, and that and that'll be that. Um, and the question and where would you say it? You uh, so you you and you say it in Avoda, right? So Manam Ora meaning Yalav Yavo will be said during Ritze. Rabbi Lezer, Omar Behoda, Bimo Omar, Mazir, and Tazir. Rabbi Lezer says, actually, the place we should put Yel Bimo is during Modim, not during Ritze. And if somebody, and he also adds that if you did, if you forgot to say, uh, if you forgot to say Yel Bimo, then you'll have to return to the beginning of the prayer. So, so Musafin Matri Vishal Shabbat, Vasai Vishal Shabbat, the Omar Kushayam Emsa. And in the case of Musaf, so when you're when you're talking about uh when we're adding the uh, talking about Rosh Kodesh or Yom Tov, so you should start off talking about Shabbos and then add in and then add in the parts about the and then and then mention Yom Tov. So you say Shabbos first, and then and then Yom Tov in the in the mentioning, as you'll notice in your sitter room for tonight. You'll see that as well. Um, and then you should then say Kudosh um, in the middle. So Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Shmuel ben Osh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Brocha, Omrim, Kol Makom Shizakuk Lesheva, Machil Mishal Shabbat, Mishal Shabbat, Omer Kudosh Hayom Bensa. So, another time we have somebody arguing, Rashmi Gamliel, Sandra and Rabbi Shmuel, Sandra Biel from the Brokha say, whenever one's required to, um, whenever somebody is davening seven, he begins the fourth, like the, the, the middle bracha starts with Shabbos and the Shabbos, and then he met would mention Yelav Yavo um, in um, Rosh Chodesh or the, or, or the, or, or Yom Tov in the middle of the center of the middle bracha, not Put it with at the end with Ritze or uh, Modim. Okay, so my have Allah. What is what's what's with this dispute about the placement of Yelav Yavo of Rosh Chodesh versus Yom Tov, and how does that whole thing work out? We're a little confused right now. So Amar Chista Zikaron Esad Ola Lakan Lakan. So he says one mentioning of remembrance. Would would go count for both cases. And that's what Rabbi says that if you have one mentioning of the new moon or the festival, that it can go it can count toward both. So as far as you know, exactly what you're supposed to be saying in terms of davening and mentioning when you're mentioning uh, and davening on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So Rabbi went. To and he asked him, "What do you, what do you, what, what do you do? Do you, should you be saying, um, Shechianu on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, right? Do they get Shechianu? And where, and if you do, where do you say that? So Kevin Bismat, 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 the Atem Rinan, or Dilma Kevin the Lo Ikur Galim Lo Rinan. So now, right? So now we dealt with before. Sorry, before until now we were talking about where the, the placement of Yalev Yavo is in terms of the rest of the Davin. 
So, and saying, how, how would you, where would you place it? And how, in terms of the ordering, let's say most of what order do you put it in? Again, you do it that Shabbos to be mentioned first, and then you mention um, Rosh Kodesh or the Yom Tov afterwards. So now, now our question is, so what about the case? So what about, so, so we dealt with that. Now we're back to the, we're now talking about the case of on, again, related to, which, which I'm talking about on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. So we're, we're asking, uh, again, we are now, um, so we're, we're in the middle of Mem, 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 Mem Bet. Um, so we're talking about, now we're talking about saying Zman, meaning saying Shekhyanu on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, do we or don't we? So is the reason why we say Shekhyanu, the question being asked here is, do, is, is Shekhyanu based on the fact that it only happens once a year, or is the fact, the reason why we say Shekhyanu on a, uh, particularly on Yom Tov, is because it's, they're called um, Regalim, right? They're called one of the, the, the three primary holidays, and, they get, and they're termed, um, and that's what gets them the ability to, that, and that's why they say, uh, well, we say Shekhyanu on them, or is it, like, so which one is it? Is it because they're one of the Shoshra Golem, or is it because they occur once a year? So this is what, this is what Rabba asked Rahuna, and lo Yadeh, and Rahuna didn't know the answer, um, uh, on, um, uh, off, uh, you know, off the top of his head. And so, Kiyata uh, Bey Rabbi Yehuda, so then when he came to the house of Yehuda, so, Amar Akara Kharata Na, uh, Nama Amina Zman. So one, uh, so one time when he came, was in the house of Yehuda, he said that uh, he, he that he said would say Shekhyanu whenever he he finds a new gourd. Um, meaning so when he says new gourd, what does that mean? By you know Akara Kharata. So then it could mean that it's a Simply he finds one that he likes, or it could be that he's saying that, um, which would fit more with the general halacha that he's referring to, when you find a new fruit, uh, the, the new fruit of the new season is what is what um, is, is kavaya. So he's saying when he notices that there's a new round of, of, uh, of fruits and that everything started tasting better again, like you know seasonal fruits, um, which again sometimes it could be multiple seasons for a, for a given for a given fruit or vegetable. But here we're saying that you know just the fact that he's happy that he got a new a, a new Joy he gets from seeing new fruit, Lazarus Shechianu. So even more so for you know for Yom Tov, when it um, whether it be Rosh Hashanah or Kippur, also when they come around, of course he's going to be happy. If he's happy for you know for the sake of his his, his new vegetable, um, of course he's going to be happy for the sake of the new Yom Tov. So Amrei Lo Rishut Lo Kamabayli Kikamabayli Chova Amai. So they're like, no, I know that I could say it if I wanted to, because um, because they're happy because they're Shechianu. So, but the question is, are you obligated to say Shekhyanu on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? That was his question. So, Amar Li, Rav Ushmuel, Domi Nefayu, Eno Merzman, El Vashlo Shagali. So, Rav Yudha said to me that he heard the name of Rav Ushmuel, that was only required to, to recite um, Shekhyanu on the Vashlo Shagali, on Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. So, Meitvei. So now we're going to argue. Wait, is that really so? Like that we that we don't say Shekhyanu on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So, so as, as it says in the Brayta, Tain Chelak L'Shiva V'Gam So this is a quote from Mishlei that you give you a portion of seven and also to eight. So what is that referring to? So Rabbi Lazar Omer Shiva Elu Shiva Yemei Breishi Shmona Elu Shmona Yemei Mila. So Rabbi Lazar says this is referring to seven is the seven days of creation, which you should make make note of and respect, and eight is referring to the days of of circumcision. Rabbi Yeshua Omer Shiva Elu Shiva Yemei Pesach Shmona Elu Shmona Yemei Achak. So if you say seven, so what does the seven teach us? Seven is that you should that 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 there are seven days of of Pesach and eight is referring to the uh, the the eight days of Sukkot. And then when it says and then when we say the word Vagam, it also comes to include Shmini um, It comes to include Shmini Atzer, Shmini um, Sorry, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. 
there's, so you see the breakdown here that it's actually not broken down by the Schlosser Gollum. It's broken down by Pasach is one thing, um, Sukkot is one, and then Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur are all learned together through another through, through another drasha off of, off of the verse. So my love. So what's this referring to? Like what, what, what what's the drop what what do you mean by seven and eight and the adding in these other days? Like what is this right referring to? My love is man, so this is not referring to teachers that are supposed to say Shekhanu. So La Lubracha, no. It's the same about the question of should you be saying a a a, a, a bracha on the day? Is would you be would you be saying would you say when you're dominating Shimon Shimon Asray, would you be saying a separate new shahayom specific to that yom tov? So my love was Mala Lebrah, right? So not for, so you're right. We initially thought maybe this was for Shekhyanu. No, it's to teach you about the bracha you'll be saying in Shemona Esrei or for Kish. So Hathinami is Sabra. So I was saying, actually, you could say that you could say it's referring to, 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 um, um, to Shekhyanu as well. The Yitzhak dot, 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 with Man. Zman Kol Shiva Mi'ika. So if you're saying that it's referring to, um, um right, so you're right, maybe it's not really referring to um Shekhanu, because because you're saying Shekhanu, like nobody says you say Shekhanu for all seven days of 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 Pesach or all eight days of Sukkot. So right, so so therefore you're right, it probably isn't referring to to um to Shekhanu because you, you don't say Shekhanu for every every day of 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 Pesach and Sukkot. So something's off. Where would so, the, Rabbi, where would the instance for Shekhyan be on Yom Kippur, because you're not making Kiddush. So we're not making Kiddush on Yom Kippur, so the uh, the preferred place to say Shekhyanu um, is if you're attending Shul, um, you should say it after um, Kol Nidre, whenever he says it together. Um, if a, somebody is not going to be atten, um, um, attending Shul, then they, then many guys for us that are women, the women, women aren't attending Shul, they, they, they can't, they can say Shekhyanu when they light their candles um and but if somebody is is lighting candles and also heading to shul it is preferable to um according to the article center i have not checked i apologize for not having checked in uh um with rabbi Crockin, so for him so i'm sure he will send this out on uh leading up to kipper that um which is exactly what menhag um is locally that is that if you're lighting candles you would not say shekhan with lighting candles you would have said that if you're going to shul you'll then say it with everybody else at Kol Nidre, after Kol Nidre. So, okay. yes, but there is a minhag to, to do it by candlelighting too, because that's also something else that's related to the day. Yeah, that's um, my recollection in Shul, but I can't remember. Right, I think in Shul you do it. I just, I just can't remember the, the minhag is for, for, for women, it's sometimes it's different, different, different different places. So for that one, I haven't verified. So I will hopefully get back to you on that. Um, Okay, so so how can I miss that, Miss Dabra? So actually, we could explain this that that the right. So you admit the Isaka Dada Zman Zman Kolshiva Miika Halokasha Adil Mavarach Edna Mavarach Lamachar Olyom Ofra. No, that's not really saying. That's not what I mentioned before about how we never say Shekhyanu for all seven days or all eight or or all eight days of Sukkot. You're saying that's not a that's not a good example at all. Why? Because um, if you forgot to say Shekhyanu on the first day of Yom Tov, you'd say it on, uh, 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 you'd say it on, say, on Cholmoyed of, of Pesach or Cholmoyed of Sukkot. So you, you get, you get to say it once for the holiday. Just, you know, if you forgot, you, go say, you would say it the next day. So, so Mikomakom Bi'inankos. So the question is, when we're saying the, that you're required to make the bracha. So I saying, I mean, we are saying that these are required in bracha. So this, are we are we not referring to saying it on a cup of wine? You say that when you say that when you say the bracha of the yom, meaning you say kiddush. You didn't say so. We refer to colloquially as kiddush because it comes with say with with the with the bracha saying the bracha on wine. But when we say kiddush, it really means to make to be mekadesh the yom to sanctify the day. So so for instance, you could make so let's say it's on on Friday night if you happen to not have grape juice available. Um, you can actually make kiddush um, on bread, being you can sanctify the day over bread. So, 
So, so if you so if you're referring to um, so so then the question. So if you're going to say if you're going to wait to say um, either shachana or the or the first bracha, does it need to be said? So then, since, but the thing is though is like that normally if it's, if it's not the first not the first night, people don't use wine when they're eating in general. So would you? So if you were to, so let's say if you're if you're if you miss saying the bracha on the first day of Yom Tov, oh, um, so should you stay on the second day of Yom Tov? Sorry, on on, on Cholamoid, should you stay on Cholamoid then? Should should you stay at Alakos on on Cholamoid? So so as in, I've never heard of that. So therefore, people don't tend to be having cups of wine on Cholamoid. So that would so Lema Masai Lema Rav Nachman that should let's just pour Rav Nachman. The Amar Rav Nachman Zman Omro Afilu Bashu. Because then the question as as uh really mentioned that about um about saying when when should we be when should we be asking about when should we when should we be saying shechiano so it's saying here it's saying that actually you could you could say shechiano even if you're not a kiddush shechiano could be divorced for be, you say shechiano without, without a cup of wine whereas you can't say the bracha of the day without a cup of wine so hello kasha lekos this is not a problem because um the case is, um, the case is you happen to have a cup, but really, um, but if you don't have a, but re- really you should not, if you don't have a cup of wine, you should not end up, you should not say, you should not say it on its own. So I understand for Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah, why, you know, you'd say it over a cup of, why you'd require a cup of wine to say Shechiana or Bechariya, uh, right? So, but in. Yom Kippur, how would that work? Imu barak alei v'shati alei, kiyon amar zman kabla alei v'asri alei. So if you wanted to say to do shechianu uh, leading into Rosh Hashanah, sorry, sorry, if you want to say, if you want to say, I'm going to say shechianu the beginning of uh, uh, the right at this exact start of Rosh Hashanah or Shavuos, you can do so, and then and then you can say shechianu right away, and that's fine. But you can't do that for for Yom Kippur. Because once you accept Yom Kippur, you can't drink your grape juice. You can't drink your wine, right? Wine you can't drink. You're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to eat and drink on Yom Kippur, right? Everybody knows that one, right? So what's going on here? So the uh, Amar, the Hamar le Rav Yirmiyah bar Abba Larav mi Badalta, Amar le Ein Medilna. So, and didn't Rabbi Yirmiya say to Rav Abba, have you therefore, have you already, when we say Badal, normally when we say Badal, so you think it's referring to um, Havdalah, uh, meaning, ah, you've been different, that's saying that now Shabbos Yom Tov is over, but here it's saying, no, have you, Badal is saying, have you accepted um, the Isser, the and have you actually probably accepted Yom Kippur yet? And he said, yes, I've, I've accepted it, and therefore, then in case when, when one, um, so this is so this, this this story happened on Shabbos. Did not happen on you know, on Yom Kippur. Or this would be this would be a big problem. So the question was: so, so he did Kiddush right at the at the at the, at the on the um uh, right right by um the onset of Shabbos. Sorry, he did it before. He did, he said Kiddush. He did early. He did he did early, instead of normally when we do early Shabbos nowadays we um we'll say we say Kabbalat Shabbat. So we've already said the Shabbat and we've done we've done Mar before we say Kiddush. But here, what he did is he actually is saying he simply goes straight into Kiddush, right? There's going to be Kabbalat Shabbat, he doesn't have Mara first. He simply goes straight into Kiddush. So the question is, wait, did you already, so did you accept, did you accept um, Shabbos yet or not? And he said, yes. That he says, once he says Kiddush, that he is therefore accepting Shabbos by saying that, by saying Kiddush. Therefore, and again, Kiddush and is going along, is going, and we're saying Kiddush. Goes along, saying a blessing over wine goes along with goes along with being the kaddish the yom, which goes along with shechianu. I'm um, sorry for saying it like that, just otherwise it gets it gets confusing. Um, so you need all so you say all those all those things together, and that's what brings and when you say them all together, that's what brings on Shabbat, and therefore it's the same thing for Yom Kippur would also bring on Yom Kippur. Therefore, that's a problem. So live rokalei v'lanchei. So one, we can say, oh, maybe you'll hold the cup, say, and and then say, and say, um, and then say, and, and, 
All right, and do Kiddush, and just not, and don't, and don't drink. So I'm a No, you can't do that, because you have to, uh, you'd have to taste it. So Litve Lianuka, so he says, oh, well, then you could just say the bracha and then hand it to a child. So, no, Litvta Karhuna Dilta Dilma Atel Nisra. No, this is a bad this is a bad practice to do because if you start saying blessings over over wine on 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 Yom Kippur, you, then you're going to come to confuse the child, the child when he grows up, and he's going to like always think he's supposed he's supposed to eat drink, eat and then, um, eat kiddush. Sorry, drink kiddush on Yom Kippur itself, and that'll lead him to like when he grows older, he will that'll be very problematic for him. So even though that's normally the eighth of give it to a kid, but we would say let's say first if you're making um, havdala on um and um on a night um leading into to, leading into a fast day that's normally what we would recommend you to do um yeah again for more on exact details of when you do or don't do um that that's addressed in help us in help us in help us and, other, and other, other fast days but just like that is an answer given in that context that is not an that it's even though it's advantage in here 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 wouldn't work because we hear because we people are much more worried about you asking that the kid making act, um, accidentally eating in the future or drinking the future than we are by an ordinary um, uh, fast day. Because those are most other fast days are only drabona. This is Doraita with a potential curry with with curry. So yeah, with too much too, too much more too. So my havela. So what, wait. So what's the conclusion? So shadru rabbanan l'rav yemar sava commander of chista malyama deresh shata. So the Chachamim sent Rav to the to the um, the one who was a who was a Chacham as well before a festa on erev Rosh Hashanah. Amar Laizil Chazi Hechi Avud Uvda. So they say, um, tell you know, goes to check what he does. Then Ta'im Anlan. Then afterwards tells what what his menag is. So Kikazye and Amar Lei Deliu Retiba Rav Salei Medukte. So when Chesed Sarv Yemar, he he quoted the words of a uh, of, of a folk saying, "One who picks up on a, a moist log um, must want something on a spot." Meaning, like, is that if you're coming now, then you definitely didn't, then you then you then you definitely didn't simply come to say hi. What, what's your question? So um, I too like Chesed the Chamra Kaddish Vamrazman. So then they brought him a a, a a cup of wine, and he said Kiddish and Shefiano right away. And therefore, uh, that's what we conclude. Omer Zman, Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Kippur. And therefore, we can conclude, you say, um, you, you would say, Shechianu, both on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Pilta, Zman, Omro, Afil, Mashuk. And the luck is, is that you'd say, um, that you say Shechianu, even if you don't have a cup of wine. That's what we conclude from that story. So that's why on, this, you know, on, on, on Yom Kippur, we will be say, you, there's no problem with saying Shechianu, even if it's not connected to anything at all. So that's why we that's why we have to do after Kalendre, because that's you know the 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 correct service. Bamaraba, Kyabina Bay Rahuna, Ibailan, um Barbe Rab Yatu to Tita Malaya Shapta Mao Ashlume. So again, so now we just got Okay, so I guess I'll have to okay, so I think we're not gonna we're not gonna probably have time to finish this this next story because I see we're out, we're out of time. So let me just summarize again. I will hopefully send out um at some point today, I will send out a recording of of the, of the next two dafim, uh, so that way you can you can read them on on on, on, on you can listen to them prior or following Rosh Hashanah. Um, if people again, if people are interested in there being a Shabbat or Yom, Shabbat or Yom Tov or Yom Kippur dafim, please let me know, um, and we can arrange it. Um, also, if anybody, even if you particularly aren't interested, or some of you is, also please let me know because we have enough interest, and then then we can offer it. Uh, so just to summarize, so today we spoke about the question of saying Shechianu on. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, that was the primary discussion we had, and our conclusion in conclusion is that yes, is that yes, you do. Uh, we had discussed also where you, um, the order of of where you would put um, Rosh, um, the, the blessing for Rosh, for Rosh Hashanah versus Shabbos, and we conclude that that actually then we combine them as, in, as opposed to the opinion of Beit Shammai, who said they're separated. We said that you combine them. And for how the exactness of for Dominic works out, I recommend that you see your um, uh, particular um, your mouth sore because again, a lot of changes. So uh, mouth sore is strongly recommended. Um, also, and also, if anybody, on, I will be giving a a sheer pro before Nimcha both on the first day and second day of Rosh Hashanah outside in the tent in the parking lot. Um, 
of the Bayit um, uh, about about uh, Truma Sarge and Tanath. It'll be interactive. You're welcome, everyone's welcome to stop by. Um, it'll be very socially distanced and masks and everything. So if you're comfortable, great. If you're not comfortable, also okay. Hopefully I'll be giving another shear on 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 on, on uh, some of the on other on Chuva as well and Tanas again different story Chuva Tanas I'll be giving that on Tuesday night um, for those who are interested details are in the email Rabbi Kropkin sent out. Hey, Shana Tova, Rabbi, thank you. Shana Tova, everybody, Rabbi. Take care, everybody. Shana Tova, everybody. How are you, Ellie? I got you. Good. Okay.